Oh my goodness. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I don't know if you realize this. I don't know if you realize this, but wow. We are one week away from the Dallas Cowboys players reporting to Oxnard, and we will be talking about... We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking, talking about, about practice. practice. I mean, it, no, listen, seriously. we're talking about we're talking practice. about practice. Not a game. Not, not a game. game. Not, not a game. game. We're talking, we're talking about, about practice. practice. Not a game. Yeah. Not, a, not, not the game we that gonna be talking go out about there and, and die for. And play every game like it's my every last. Game, not the game. Like it's last. We're talking about practice, practice. man. Practice, I mean, man. How silly, I'm how silly is, that? is that? We're talking, about, we talking practice. about practice. I know I'm supposed to be there. I know I'm supposed to lead by example. I know that. We're going to be talking about practice. You know, I can't wait to get to Oxnard. Um, last year this time, the big talk was how pissed off the people, if you've ever been to Oxnard for training camp, it's kind of shrunk the practice fields and everything else. The first time I went, I think was in 2012. Um, we were actually doing the road trip with United Way to do the billboard campaign, in which case we did a photo shoot after practice on the fields with Tyron Smith. And at that time, where the townhouses are, with, if you've been there, there's the wall. That's right there in the townhouses that are right there. So you can literally look at the ball fields. Those weren't there. What was there were actually bleachers that were shaded by trees. And then there was the fence in front of the, the bleachers. And you could actually go on the other side of the fence, which was right there at the field. So if you paid the $20 for the, um, the True Blue membership, you could, of course, be right there on the fence line with the players where they come in for the entranceway. Well, the developer bought all the land and sold the idea of when the Cowboys come to Oxnard for training camp, you can be watching practice. Now, my question always was, was would Bill Belichick actually have, you know, somebody there for the couple of weeks that the Cowboys are there doing training camp, literally filming practice, okay? Um, we don't know if Bill Belichick did or didn't, but that opportunity was there. Well, last year, the Cowboys decided we're going to do like a VIP platform that'll have shaded, you know, covers and stuff on there. Although, the thing about Oxnard is, oh my God, Oxnard, it's like 72, 75 degrees max, max. It's actually chilly. You go out on the beach, you know, in the evening, it's cold. I don't know how it is like this because you go down to LA, it's like hot, hot, you know, the, your tires are melting on the pavement and stuff, but you go to Oxnard, it's chilly. It's beautiful there. I love it. And as you're coming from the hotel and going past all of the, the farms and stuff out there, you see everything growing and everything. It's just, it's just really beautiful, very serene. And, you know, you've seen it grow, or at least I've seen it grow over the years. As it's grown, everything has been kind of shrunk up. So I'm curious to see how it all plays out with it this year, how they're working everything else. Because where the VIP behind the end zone – that used to be only for the press and stuff. But, you know, Jerry Jones, he's about making that money. And so they're going to end up selling that VIP experience and things to give you access as long as you pay for it. Be that as it may, they will be at training camp. Now, the Cowboys, of course, um, <laughs> oh, boy, they'll be hopping on that plane going out there. Now, I will, of course, be hopping out there January, excuse me, uh, August 4th. We'll be there 4th through the 12th. We'll be there for the practice with the Rams. We'll be there for the scrimmage. We're going to be actually doing some work and stuff, hopefully with Dan Leo as well, out there at practice. One thing I won't do is as we're going on the trip, I'm going, my, my, my daughters are going with me, and uh, my wife are going and stuff, so we get a little vacation while I'm taking care of practice. Um, because, you know, we're going to be there talking about it. We sitting in here, I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. We're going to talk about practice. I mean, it, listen, we're talking listen. about practice. We're going to talk about not practice. A game, not, the not, game. A game. not the game. Not a game. Not a game. Well, actually, we're talking about. We will be talking about the first preseason game. We will be talking about that. So be that as it may. One thing I won't do 
on the plane is like Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis, two-time Super Bowl champion with the uh, Denver Broncos, Hall of Famer, was on a plane with his family. And during drink service, beverage service and stuff, the flight attendant had gone past Terrell Davis and he wanted to get a cup of ice. And he said, excuse me. And the attendant either ignored him or didn't hear him. And Terrell Davis apparently grabbed him by the arm. The flight attendant freaked out and said, don't hit me, and runs to the front of the plane. Terrell Davis gets escorted off the plane in handcuffs. He has since gotten an apology from the airlines, and they're doing an investigation, and the flight attendant is um, suspended pending this this, uh, investigation. But this is kind of crazy that literally the dude went off. So I will not be asking for any ice, no ice whatsoever. So as we get here, you know the role with the Cowboys. The Cowboys have done nothing to really talk about, nothing of note. The biggest thing, storylines we've had have been this offseason have been the Dak Prescott um, uh, lawsuit where he's countersued for defamation and Jerry Jones' paternity suit. It ain't about the stuff on the field because we've done nothing on the field. Some thought was we'd get CeeDee Lamb worked on maybe before training camp to get him in here and not have him holding out like Zach Martin did. I don't understand why the Cowboys keep repeating the same mistakes. You know, we've had this with Zeke. We've had this with Zach Martin. And it seems like for the most part, when they've done these things, it's actually hurt the team. It has. And so, thus far, the Cowboys have done nothing on his contract. Now, the question I have is right now, because the franchise tagging um, becomes effective as of the 15th, as of yesterday. So, since a deal's not worked out, if you've been franchise tagged, your only option is to play on that franchise tag. And that's where the Bengals are with T. Higgins. Now, T. Higgins, of course, um, his quarterback has been paid, was paid last year. Is this a case of where it's we had to choose one or the other? You could look at the Minnesota Vikings. They ended up paying Justin Jefferson and letting the quarterback go. The Eagles, on the other hand, they paid both of their receivers and their quarterback. And it's looking like Miami is going to pay their quarterback as well as their receivers. But the question you have to ask is, is this the way of the Dallas Cowboys? Is this going to be the model for them that they're going to say, you're going to pay in your fifth-year option, And then we can franchise tag you next year. Now, for T. Higgins, T. Higgins' price tag is $21 million on the franchise tag. Um, And apparently, they're okay with letting him go ahead and walk at the end of the season. They won't be tied up, of course, with them. The bigger question for me is, as we go through and we've heard all the quarterback rankings and everything else, is Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow healthy is one of the best quarterbacks in football. But as they say, your best ability is your availability. And you have to wonder about how healthy will he be. Last year, he started the season in training camp with a calf issue, which seemed to linger the whole season. So is Joe Burrow going to be healthy this year? Is he going to be able to, to be able to continue? And maybe this is part of the thinking of, do we want to tie our wide receiver up big time? And we're not sure how long our quarterback is going to be there. Interesting take. And could this be the Dallas Cowboys that says, yeah, CeeDee Lamb is going to be pissed off playing on that $17 million fifth-year option, but we can franchise tag him like we did D-Law, like we did with uh, Dalton Schultz, like we did with Tony Pollard. Why should we change what we're doing and make him prove it? Which means then you're not paying him this year, and you're not paying him next year. And if you decide, we can let him walk. Let's listen to the NFL Network for a minute on their explanation of those now, topics. requested a trade. He's not happy with his contractual situation. Every situation is unique. Every situation is particular to a player. Mm-hmm. There's not an overall, this is our process. Take each situation as it comes. I would be very, very surprised if Cincinnati gives him an extension of the kind that he wants. It's going to be hard for them to already pay Joe, pay Jamar, and yeah. T. Higgins. It is considered a long shot, and any type of long-term deal will get done. 
It is deadline day in Cincy after an offseason of drama between T. Higgins and the Bengals. The deadline it is. to turn the franchise tag into a long term deal has come and, and gone. gone for the Bengals wide receiver. Dan Graziano, what does that mean now for Higgins this upcoming season? Well, it means he'll be an unrestricted free agent when the season is over. Uh, and, you know, it, I think he's made his peace, it seems like, with playing on the franchise tag. Earlier in the offseason, he had demanded a trade. The Bengals said, we're not interested in trading you. We're trying to keep the team together as long as we can and win a Super Bowl. However, um, what he was looking for in terms of a contract and what they were willing to offer, especially with Jamar Chase now eligible for an extension and Joe Burrow having signed one last year, was not the same. So it reminds you, Kevin, of two years ago, the Bengals franchise safety Jesse Bates. He wasn't happy. It took him a while to report to camp, but he did. Played out the year, played great, and got a big free agent contract from the Atlanta Falcons there the you following go. spring. I don't know if it'll be the Falcons or what team, but I would guess a similar situation plays out with T. Higgins. Okay, and that's how we start the show. Welcome into NFL Live. You just heard Grog. Yep, so there you go. Back as well with us. I'm Kevin Nagani. Higgins' future is not the only big question mark in the Queen. The other question, of course, no is Joe Burrow. Have had, slow starts have been a huge theme here in the Joe Burrow era. In Burrow's four seasons, he's posted a below-average QBR over the team's first five games, and the team has been three games under 500 in those starts. The rest Second of half the of the season, season guy. Has looked like an elite quarterback, and it's worth noting that he's often entered the season with an injury problem, mm -hmm. including last year's calf injury. So that sets things up well. Graz, what do we know about Burrow's health heading into camp? Indications are positive throughout the offseason. Uh, he's coming off of that wrist injury and surgically and a surgical repair. Uh, it's an odd injury. It's, it's an uncommon one, right? He's coming back from an Achilles or an ACL. Those are tough recoveries, but at least we know what they look like. This is not an injury we've seen with quarterbacks on their throwing hands. So the Bengals will continue to monitor it. So far, so good. Their hope is that he can have a full training camp. You mentioned it, Kevin. 2020, there was COVID. 21, he was coming off ACL. 22, he had his appendix out. And last year... The uh, calf injury. injury. So he's never had a fully healthy training camp. They would like that to be the case. That said, if he feels something in that hand, that wrist, they'll back him off as need be. But their plan going in is to try and get him to the season healthy and get him as much work as they possibly can in camp. Okay, camp starts next week. So what's the biggest question, Mina, for this offense? They need to answer early in the season. Well, aside from Joe Burrow's health, mobility, all of that, one thing that I'm really curious to see is with T. Higgins back, as we all expected, who is the third option on this offense? Which doesn't sound well, like we're, a big we'll deal get, when you're talking about an offense. That we don't need to go through all of that with them. But that's, you know, interesting take here where, you know, they've gone through, they've paid a bunch of people, and it's looking like, you know, he's going to be the odd man out. So we'll see if that ends up being what the Cowboys end up doing, of course, with C.D. Lamb. Now, here's an interesting question here as we roll on, get ready to roll on out of here, is with um, the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rich Eisen was actually talking about what is the possibility that um, the Cowboys or Tampa Bay are repeat champions. And we know that nobody has repeated in the NFC East since the Eagles did 2003, uh, 2002, 2003, and 2004. So let's see if that's a possibility. It's always possible. Here's the deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with, uh, with all seriousness. We have a quarterback-driven league, right? Yep. And last year, 100%. Last year, they turned the page from Tom Brady. And at the time when Brady was... Going on the old uh, boat parade and his avocado tequila and what have you, we all thought that his successor would be one of the guys who helped take him out and Kyle Trask help him out of the uh, facility. And as it uh, turned out, it was Baker Mayfield. And that was truly one of the more surprising plot twists in a sport that just provides them nonstop and Baker wound up taking them to the playoffs although the last few weeks of the season didn't make it feel like mm -hmm. they would eliminate the defending NFC champs as they did, they did convincingly but the defending NFC champs fell apart at the end of the season and then they go into Detroit and you know play very well 
Uh, but the final interception of the season for Baker Mayfield sealed the deal as they were driving to try and tie that game. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it felt like they were about to. The, they, way, they were it, the way they were playing. Yeah. So it's Baker's world. And here he was. Which show was he on? Uh, the Mike Calta show? Um, and uh, this is what he had to say about returning to Tampa. Tell you what, you're having a lot more fun when you're not getting shipped off to different places like a piece of dirty laundry. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So, <laughs> when I got embraced, when I got embraced in Tampa, uh, it it made a world of difference. And you know, it's it's just like kind of always, always. I've always played. Mm. I'll always enjoy it. I mean, it is a game. Yes, it is my job, but uh, I love it so much. So why not? I've always wore my emotions on my sleeve, and so let people embrace that. And that's why I'm so excited for having more years to come in Tampa for people to just get to know me a little bit better. Um, truly realize that that's not just uh, a show on the field. That's who I am when it comes down to the football aspect. And um, I love it. I, I do anything for our team and um, our locker room guys know that. Uh, it, it's just a, um, a beautiful marriage. He in Tampa right now. Mm-hmm. It's nice and when they, they actually they, appreciate they did, you. I mean, they did the work. Their general manager did the work. Jason Light did the work. They kept the guys in town. I mean, kept them. They, they, everyone thought Mike Evans was going to be out of there. And, you know, they bring Baker back, and now Mike's back. And it's kind of a sneaky, fun offense. Led by Baker, obviously. But, well, mm -hmm. the guy who was coordinating it was the one the Panthers chose to higher as their new head coach now that's the question that we were kind of hunting and pecking with um, Rashad White last week so I'll ask you this question here's the question the running it back you're more confident in Ooh, to like win this. the division again mm -hmm. I like this Dallas or Tampa you're more confident Ooh. Mm. In the running it back. Who? That's a tough one. Tampa. Really? Okay. He's like, uh... Are you the same That's a good over question. there, too? Well, if you, if you go by the one loss record that I gave because I was being realistic, I'm like every single person that's called and played this game, I have the Cowboys <laughs> winning 11. Um, so, that's I, right. you know, the way that NFC East works, it's hard to win... Like back, back to back. back. So I'm thinking maybe the Eagles. Giants are going to be better. Might no, but the Eagles. Oh, every year we division. hear Giants Eagles and Washington are, really are always going to be better. You're saying to have a repeat. There are two division. I think the, two the division Eagles winners that have that that ran it back. Where they they one of them we didn't expect them to just completely run it back and just add some other uh, players to the mix and didn't. And Tampa truly are running it back. They are they they went ahead and signed a whole bunch of people re-signed a whole bunch of people that a whole bunch of observers thought they wouldn't be able to do. Mm -hmm. And they did it. Including Levante it. David, too. I like their chances of running it back better. Better, better than Dallas? Yeah. How about you guys? Wow. So much uncertainty with, with, with what's going on in Dallas. You look and, at and Tampa's you're schedule you're playing against again, history. Uh, Lenny in Panama City yeah, gave him a 20-0. and 0. Mitch in Dallas gave him an 11 and 6. Starting with the Commanders... I'm just looking at who at else the is Lions, in that and they are home. They, they've got a great schedule too. They are home in three of their first four, and they do you, have the Eagles. They do have the Lions. How many times they've got to they got Baltimore. go? They got Kansas West. City and San Francisco. They're at the Chargers and at the Cowboys. They're home. I mean, they don't. I mean, at the cold not, day it might be in New York. Yeah, but they're not going to blow After me away. Thanksgiving? I, I feel like they're 9, 8, 10, and 7 at best. But the schedule's not bad. There's a lot of indoor games, and there's a... It's probably going to take seriously. less games you want to, talk to about win their going division. In the, in the cold weather, the first week of November at Kansas City, and then the Friday, the, uh, pardon me, Sunday after Thanksgiving at the Giants. It might be cool and December 1st in Carolina but other than that they're home for the Raiders they're at the Chargers at the Cowboys home for the Panthers home for the Saints to end it and they're three out of four at home to start and their last tour at home it's a good schedule yeah but we and don't buy right there in the middle yeah but we don't know if they're good enough to hang with the Ravens the Chiefs and the 49ers class like they're not up there yet maybe if, they if, take the if, step forward if at all they were in the final eight last year maybe I mean, 
But that was the easiest playoff, quote-unquote, upset to predict last year that they were going to beat the Eagles. Oh. Catch the Rich Eisen wow. Show every single wow. day. Wow. Throwing shade on the Eagles. All right, good people. That's what we got for you today. You know, Skip Bayless is no longer going to be the host after the summer ends. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that show starts today. Um, I just won't be here. I've got to get out. I've got to take care of some business this morning. But it'll be interesting to hear what happens on that one. As always, you know I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. Peace out.